The once bustling market square in Jabalia is now a graveyard. Grief beyond words or prayer. The Palestinian Authority president today accused the USA of being complicit in what it called Israeli genocide, ethnic cleansing and war crimes. But Israel, born itself from the horrors of genocide, still feels threatened by Hamas. How will history judge the death that reigns from Gaza's skies? In Khan Yunis, where 15 members of the Rabi family were crushed in the rubble. The old, the young, taken out unmoving, body by body. Where Ahmed, age three, wonders what crime he committed to lose his leg. In Rafa, where failure of the UN Security Council to demand a ceasefire last night has not gone unnoticed. Hamas nihilism, Israeli bombs, US complicity, who is to blame? In the Gaza Strip, we're governed by the American law of the jungle. America's killed human rights, it's killed children's rights, it's killed women's rights. In contra. When the US wielded its Security Council veto, it was effectively supported by the UK, which abstained, citing the same reason, Hamas. We call for further and longer pauses to get aid to Palestinians and allow space for further hostage releases. But we cannot vote in favour of a resolution which does not condemn the atrocities Hamas committed against innocent Israeli civilians on the 7th of October. So Israel's bombs continue to fall. Hamas holds on to its hostages. And of the nearly 20,000 now killed since October 7th, according to the Palestinian Health Authority, over 6,000 are Gaza's children. We will continue our efforts. We will continue knocking on the door of the Security Council until it wakes up and shoulder its responsibility by stopping this criminal war against the Palestinian people, particularly the children among us who are the best among us. Smoke billows from an apartment block next to a school, the playground, a refugee camp. The wretched logic of this war has turned sanctuaries into potential targets. Khalifa School in Beit Leia, a number of medical students sheltering there sent us audio clips. They say there's no food, no water, no power, and are terrified that if they try and leave, they'll be killed. One doctor told us... The snipers target anything that moves. We can't even move from one classroom to another to help the injured. More than five shot at the entrance of the school, but we can't reach them. They died as we watched. As we go to air, we've been told the Israeli army has now entered the school, arrested the men, told women and children to remain in the classrooms. We asked the IDF for their response. They didn't deny the claims about using snipers. Earlier, they'd released this footage of them raiding a different, apparently empty school. They say shows hidden Hamas tunnels. The IDF told us they follow international law and take feasible precautions to mitigate civilian harm distributing more video they claim is evidence of Hamas fighters shooting from inside a UN school, using the residents of Gaza as human shields. Tonight, when will it end? How will it end? And who can make it end? Damien Zerum there. Well, our foreign affairs correspondent, uh, Sekunda Kamani, is in Jerusalem for us tonight. Sekunda. Well, Kieran, you heard in that report that the president of the Palestinian Authority is holding the United States ultimately responsible for the bloodshed after that veto, uh, after vetoing that resolution last night. Actually, I mean, the uh, United States has been growing increasingly vocal by its standards in, in raising concerns about uh, the high number of civilian casualties in Gaza, but we saw that that does not mean that it's going to be willing to call for a ceasefire. And of course, the US is still continuing to supply Israel with billions and billions of dollars worth of military aid. 
uh, America has been pushing for increased humanitarian access into the Gaza Strip. I think Israeli officials here see agreeing to that as a means of trying to uh, extend uh, the, the window of legitimacy as they see it for this operation. Um, the Americans, according to a number of reports now, have said to uh, the Israelis that they need to wrap up this huge large-scale offensive within the next month or so. That may well fit within the kind of time frame that the Israelis have themselves, given the way they're expanding control of both the north and now the south of the Gaza Strip. There, the Israeli aim, of course, still remains the destruction of the military capabilities of Hamas and the safe release of their hostages. Today, residents of Kibbutz Beri confirmed that a young man from there who'd been abducted and taken into Gaza had died. Hamas say he was killed during a botched uh, attempted special forces rescue raid. Of course, no way of knowing if that's uh, really what happened or not. Tonight, as every Saturday night, as we've seen since this conflict began in Israel, there'll be large rallies calling for the safe return of the other hostages. Sekunda, thank you. Sekunda Kamani there for us in Jerusalem. And we're joined now by Jennifer Cassidy, who lectures in diplomacy at the University of Oxford, and she served as a diplomatic attaché to Ireland's UN uh, mission. Uh, Jennifer, the day after the US veto at the Security Council, I mean, how much international pressure do you feel the US is under today? A huge amount of international pressure, although we all predicted it. I think diplomatic scholars, international lawyers, and, and um, all citizens following um, this horrific conflict all predicted that the US was going to veto it from their statements previously. It still was such a blow to humanity to see that hand uh, raised by Deputy Ambassador Robin Wood from, from uh, the, the US embassy to, to veto it. Um, What's really going on then, do you, do you think, Jennifer? I mean, is this, as some commentators say, the US giving a bit of diplomatic cover for the, for the Israelis to achieve a more limited, limited uh, military outcome, namely getting rid of, I think, three Hamas commanders? So uh, I don't think anyone knows what's going on in the minds of um, the Isra Israeli government or the US government. But what, what we can say as policy advisors and diplomatic scholars is, I it baffles me to think that these are the top strategic analysts in the world in, in Israel and the US, and they do not even consider the concept that Hamas is an ideology first and an organization second. So there's no way of defeating and ultimately rooting out all of Hamas if that is their pure aim. And there's one extremely important point to note that I heard an UNRWA uh, colleague make yesterday on an interview. You know, and whether we agree with this or not, this is the truth. We've seen this in the Northern Ireland conflict. We've seen it in Afghanistan. We've seen it in Iraq. That with every Hamas fighter killed and every civilian killed, what the Israeli government, uh, funded by the U.S., is really doing is creating a new Hamas. How can these people forgive the bombing of mm. all their families, everything they know? And Jennifer, you know, and, uh, yeah. what, what, what the U.S. has said is that Hamas is not interested in a durable peace, and also that there are still hostages, obviously. But specifically, what, one objection that the U.K. had as well, who abstained along with the U.S., was that there was no language in there con condemning Hamas in this uh, resolution that, 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 that failed ultimately. So, so why, why can't there be that language included? What's the obstacle? Yeah. So, so for me, um, personally, that's, that surprised me. You know, I've sat in the Security Council a number, a number of times and I've seen a number of issues, particularly uh, at the beginning of the Syrian um, um, war and uh, many people vetoing it. Uh, and I usually could predict who was going to veto what, but the UK did surprise me in this in abstention. Now, we know an abstention doesn't affect the outright vote, but it still gives a diplomatic signal. Now, the key reasoning behind this um, from an ambassador, you know, that I, um, you know, truly respect um, from, from the mm. UK mission to to the UN. And she stated that the key reasoning behind 
having to abstain is that the resolution did not explicitly mm. condemn the acts of Hamas on October 7th. And, and just to quickly add in there, from the October 7th, the international community and all multilateral institutions at large have come out quickly and continuously and consistently mm -hmm. condemning these acts on October 7th. And, so, and do you, you think, know, Jennifer, I, do you, sorry, sorry to cut you in there, but do you no, think no, that ultimately th this gets a resolution at the UN Security Council? Or do you think this only ends, as many people say it does, when the US ultimately says so? And it says to Israel, very briefly, 10 seconds. Um, pessimistically, I do not think it's going to end with the UN Security Council passing a resolution. What we need to do is focus on regional blocs, the EU, ASEAN, BRICS, and get international sanctions and work together through regional blocs and actually work outside the UN. Okay. Jennifer, thanks so much for your time.